Hello, and welcome back to QBank Pro Academy for another Q&A with detailed explanations. Join thousands of nursing students who have used our instruction. Remember to sign up for free resources with the link below, including a study guide, 75 question exam, quizzes, and more. Let's get started. The nurse assesses a patient with shortness of breath that is suspected of having pulmonary embolism. What are the nursing priorities? Select all that apply. A. Reassure and position the patient in prone position. B. Administer oxygen. C. Notify the healthcare provider. D. Obtain a sputum for culture. The correct answer is B. Administer oxygen. And C. Notify the healthcare provider. Explanation. PE may occur when a clot forms in a deep vein that travels to the heart and then goes to the lung. Symptoms include shortness of breath, syncope, severe hypotension, and respiratory distress. The exam will ask about nursing care of the most common respiratory problems, for example, pulmonary embolism, pneumonia, and bronchitis. The nurse assesses a patient with cough and dark yellow sputum. Which of the following is true about the evaluation of lung infection? Select all that apply. A, a chest x-ray will not be needed. B, if sputum collection is done, 15 milliliters of sputum should be obtained. C, a clean, dry, non-sterile cup may be used for sputum collection. D, remove all jewelry in the chest area if a chest x-ray is ordered. The correct answer is B. If sputum collection is done, 15 milliliters of sputum should be obtained. And D. Remove all jewelry in the chest area if a chest x ray is ordered. Explanation Evaluating patients for lung infection or pneumonia includes chest x ray and sputum collection. A clean, dry, sterile cup will be used. Presenting symptoms may include fever, productive cough, chest pain and mild to severe shortness of breath. The nurse is instructing a patient with chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, COPD, that is being discharged home. What are the instructions for this patient? Select all that apply. A, smoking should be limited to less than one pack per day. B, dietary restrictions of 2000 calories per day. C, use pursed lip and diaphragmatic breathing. D, Alternate periods of activity and rest. The correct answer is C. Use pursed lip and diaphragmatic breathing. And D. Alternate periods of activity and rest. Explanation. Patients with COPD should receive education and ensure that they understand activity limitations, dietary recommendations, avoiding allergens, prescribed medications, breathing technique, and stop smoking. The nurse assesses a patient with cough that is suspected of having COPD. The patient's chest x-ray shows a barrel chest. This is a characteristic of what condition? Select all that apply. A, asthma. B, sarcoidosis. C, chronic pneumonia. D, emphysema. The correct answer is D, emphysema. Explanation. Emphysema is a chronic obstructive pulmonary disease strongly associated with the history of smoking. The air sacs become damaged and the lungs are hyperinflated. This alters lung mechanics and barrel chest is a characteristic. The nurse assesses a patient with cough and weight loss suspected of having TB. In duration of 10 millimeters on a tuberculin skin test reaction indicates Select all that apply. A, positive in healthy low-risk individuals. B, positive in residents of prisons and jails. C, positive in children two years of age. D, positive in patients with renal failure on dialysis. The correct answer is B, positive in residents of prisons and jails. C, positive in children two years of age, and D, positive in patients with renal failure on dialysis. Explanation. 
In duration of greater than or equal to 10 millimeters is considered positive for children less than four years of age and some high-risk groups. This includes residents of prisons and jails and patients receiving renal dialysis. The exam will ask about who gets TB tested, the technique, and interpretation of results. The nurse needs to obtain a sputum sample on a patient suspected of pneumonia. How does the nurse proceed? A. Have the patient rinse the mouth with water prior to the sputum collection. B. Rinse the mouth and spit the rinse into the specimen cup. C. Obtain approximately 10 milliliters of expectorant. D. Suction the mouth and include the tip of the cannula in the specimen cup. The correct answer is A. Have the patient rinse the mouth with water prior to sputum collection. Explanation. Sputum assessment in pneumonia helps identify the organisms causing the lung infection. The patient will take deep breaths and then cough deeply. Obtain 15 milliliters of sputum for the sample. This should be sent to the lab for culture and sensitivity. Which of the following statements are false regarding preparation for and aftercare of bronchoscopy? A, the patient should be NPO prior to the procedure. B, dentures may be left in place. C, intravenous access is maintained for medication administration and fluids as needed. D, the patient should be monitored for bloody sputum after the procedure. The correct answer is B, dentures may be left in place. Explanation, bronchoscopy allows direct visualization of the airways. In addition, samples and biopsies can be obtained. The patient is sedated and a long scope with a light at the tip will be inserted into the airway for the procedure. The nurse receives a patient from the recovery room who has undergone bronchoscopy. Which of the following are important steps? Select all that apply. A, NPO prior to bronchoscopy. B, obtain informed consent prior to bronchoscopy. C, administer contrast dye 20 minutes prior to bronchoscopy. D, emergency supplies for resuscitation should be obtained and readily available prior to starting bronchoscopy. The correct answer is A, NPO prior to bronchoscopy, B, obtain informed consent prior to bronchoscopy, and D, emergency supplies for resuscitation should be obtained and readily available prior to starting bronchoscopy. Explanation. Bronchoscopy is an invasive procedure that requires informed consent. NPO is necessary to prevent aspiration during the procedure. In the event of distress, emergency resuscitative supplies should be at the bedside. Which of the following are true about the nursing care of a patient with a pneumothorax? A, supplemental oxygen, binasal cannula, or face mask should be removed prior to starting any procedure. B, to assess for an air leak, the nurse should clamp the chest tube and observe the chest tube drainage system. C, when the chest tube is in place, no holes should be visible outside of the skin. D, when transporting the patient, the chest tube drainage system may be placed on top of the bed mattress near the patient's feet. The correct answer is C. When the chest tube is in place, no holes should be visible outside of the skin. Explanation. Patients with pneumothorax are typically short of breath and require supplemental oxygen around the clock. Do not clamp chest tubes unless you have a written order. The chest tube drainage system should be maintained below the level of the heart. The UAP asks the nurse about a patient who has just undergone endobronchial ultrasound. The nurse correctly answers, select all that apply. A. The exam is done to evaluate lung tumors and collect specimens. B. Informed consent will not need to be obtained for this procedure. C. The patient will be monitored for respiratory distress after the procedure. D. 
Bleeding is not a complication of this procedure. The correct answer is A, the exam is done to evaluate lung tumors and collect specimens, and C, the patient will be monitored for respiratory distress after the procedure. Explanation. Endobronchial ultrasound is a useful test to assess lymph nodes and some lung masses. Endobronchial ultrasound is an invasive procedure that requires informed consent. NPO is necessary to prevent aspiration during the procedure. In the event of distress, emergency resuscitative supplies should be at the bedside. The nurse's patient is leaving the floor for a thoracentesis procedure. Which of the following tasks should the nurse complete? Select all that apply. A, explain to the patient that they will be prone during the procedure. B, check the patient's coagulation labs if ordered. C, check to see if an informed consent is on the chart. D, explain to the patient that they will be positioned sitting upright for the procedure. The correct answer is B, check the patient's coagulation labs if ordered. C, check to see if an informed consent is on the chart. And D, explain to the patient that they will be positioned sitting upright for the procedure. Explanation. Thoracentesis is a bedside procedure that allows removal of fluid from the pleural space using a needle. This can help improve the patient's symptoms and the fluid can be tested for cells and infectious organisms. The morning before a scheduled pulmonary function test, which of the patient's medications should the nurse call the healthcare provider about? A, furosemide, B, HCTZ, C, glipizide, D, albuterol. The correct answer is D, albuterol. Explanation. Prior to pulmonary function test, the patient should be instructed to refrain from smoking. Discuss with the primary health care provider about whether bronchodilators such as albuterol should be withheld prior to testing. The nurse assesses a patient with chronic cough and hemoptysis. How will the nurse prepare, assess the patient prior to lung biopsy? Select all that apply. A, NPO prior to the procedure, B, administer analgesics or sedatives as prescribed. C, administer the patient's medications, furosemide, enoxaparin, insulin, and ceftriaxone. D, hold, do not administer the patient's blood pressure medications prior to the procedure. The correct answer is, a, NPO prior to the procedure, and B, administer analgesics or sedatives as prescribed. Explanation. Lung biopsy is done to obtain tissue for examination. Like bronchoscopy, biopsy of the lung is an invasive procedure that requires an informed consent. NPO is necessary to prevent aspiration during the procedure. In the event of distress, emergency resuscitative supplies should be at the bedside. The nurse receives a patient from the recovery room who has undergone endobronchial ultrasound. Which of the following are important steps prior to endobronchial ultrasound? Select all that apply. A. NPO prior to endobronchial ultrasound. B. Obtain informed consent prior to endobronchial ultrasound. C. Administer contrast dye 20 minutes prior to endobronchial ultrasound. D. Emergency supplies for resuscitation should be readily available at the bedside prior to starting endobronchial ultrasound. The correct answer is A, NPO prior to endobronchial ultrasound, B, obtain informed consent prior to endobronchial ultrasound, and D, emergency supplies for resuscitation should be readily available at the bedside prior to starting endobronchial ultrasound. Explanation. Endobronchial ultrasound is a test 
to assess lymph nodes and some lung masses. Endobronchial ultrasound is an invasive procedure that requires informed consent. NPO is necessary to prevent aspiration during the procedure. In the event of distress, emergency resuscitative supplies should be available at the bedside. The nurse assesses a patient with shortness of breath and hemoptysis. What allergies would the nurse ask the patient about prior to a VQ scan? Select all that apply. A. Peanuts. B. Shellfish. C. Bees. D. Eggs. The correct answer is B. Shellfish. And D. Eggs. Explanation. VQ scan may be done in patients to evaluate for pulmonary embolism. However, it requires administration of dye. Patients with allergies to shellfish or eggs may be at high risk for a reaction to the contrast dye. The nurse assesses a patient with fever and cough that is suspected of having tuberculosis. The nurse must obtain a tuberculin skin test. What steps will be performed? Select all that apply. A. Shave the area prior to applying the skin test. B. Assess the injection site 48 to 72 hours after the injection. C. Insert the needle into the muscle belly. D. Tell the patient not to scratch the site to prevent infection and irritation. The correct answer is B. Assess the injection site 48 to 72 hours after the injection. And D. Tell the patient not to scratch the site to prevent infection and irritation. Explanation. A TB skin test is an intradermal injection to assess for tuberculosis disease. There are a number of considerations such as who gets tested, technique, and interpretation of the skin reaction that the exam will ask you about. Prior to obtaining an arterial blood gas, ABG, the nurse will ensure the following. Select all that apply. A. Clean the antecubital fossa of the arm for the procedure. B. Explain to the patient that this test is done to assess the patient's oxygen level in the blood. C. Avoid suctioning the patient before drawing an ABG. D. Clean and prep the neck area for the procedure. The correct answer is B. Explain to the patient that this test is done to assess the patient's oxygen level in the blood. And C. Avoid suctioning the patient before drawing an ABG. Explanation. The ABG test provides a better assessment of oxygen in the blood than pulse oximetry. Suctioning the patient prior to an ABG may result in a lower PaO2 result. The UAP asked the nurse about using pulse oximetry monitoring. The nurse correctly answers. Select all that apply. A. The pulse oximeter measures the hemoglobin that carries oxygen in the blood. B. Normal values for oxygen saturation are 95 to 100 percent. C. Fingernail polish and vasoconstriction may affect the measurement. D. Low blood pressure hypotension may affect the pulse oximetry measurement. The correct answer is B. Normal values for oxygen saturation are 95 to 100 percent. C. Fingernail polish and vasoconstriction may affect the measurement. And D. Low blood pressure hypotension may affect the pulse oximetry measurement. Explanation. Pulse oximetry is non-invasive. A finger is placed between the light source and the light detector to determine the oxygen saturation. It is used to assess and continuously monitor a patient's oxygen level. The nurse is asked to draw a D-dimer on a patient. Which of the following are important considerations? Select all that apply. A. The D-dimer is measured to assist in the diagnosis of DIC. B. D-dimer is decreased in DIC. C. D-dimer is elevated in DIC. D. The normal D-dimer is less than 50 nanograms per milliliter.
the correct answer is A. The D-dimer is measured to assist in the diagnosis of DIC. C. D-dimer is elevated in DIC. And D. The normal D-dimer level is less than 50 nanograms per mil. Explanation. D-dimer is an important blood test that measures the amount of clot breakdown in formation. Very high D-dimer levels are a sign of severe disseminated intravascular coagulation in patients. A patient with asthma who is being discharged asks the nurse about common triggers for allergies. The nurse correctly answers. Select all that apply. A. Medications. B. Vinyl. C. Metal. D. Molds. The correct answer is A. Medications. C. Metal. And D. Molds. Explanation. Asthma is a chronic condition of the lungs characterized by inflammation and reaction to certain triggers. Patients experience narrowing of the airways that result in shortness of breath. 